And many of you were with us this weekend in Tullahoma, Tennessee for the final 2015 AOPA regional fly-in. In spite of some wet weather, we had a great event. More than 2,500 people made it out to the airport and 330 airplanes flew in. The event was centered on the beautiful campus of the Beechcraft Heritage Museum. In the hangars, we had a barnstormers party complete with Nashville music. And where else are you going to have an exhibit hall crowned with a beach starship? Several hundred people got together for the Pilot Town Hall at Tullahoma. AOPA President Mark Baker and other association leaders answered questions, and Melissa here talked with the crowd about the FAA's new compliance policy. The idea is that we want to do everything we can to bring the pilot back into compliance, not punish them. It's education, it's training, it's communication, and it's making sure that we, had, it's a risk-based approach to um, the system, and, and it doesn't do any good if somebody busts Class B airspace to suspend their license for six months. That doesn't address the issue. If, if it was inadvertent, the best thing to do would do a training flight. You know, or, or some sort of uh, remedial training and, and not make it punitive. We want people to fly. We don't want people to be afraid of gotchas. You'll remember we told you last week about the FAA's culture shift when it comes to compliance actions. The crowd had a lot of good questions for Mark. One of the topics he covered was the idea of privatizing air traffic control services. If ATO should be spun out and become privatized, which I'm not for or against at the moment, we would look at that as long as we don't have any user fees. We don't lose access to the airspace, and we would take a look at it. Is there a more efficient way to become, you know, modernized with air traffic control? Now, I can fall back on an example where that actually did work. You know, flight service stations, how many, how many of you guys went out there and had somebody draw you a little map about 20 years ago and tell you that this thunderstorm looked like it was about here? Yeah, right? That was really good maps, too. But that cost us about $500 million a year 20 years ago. Today the bidding is reopened for flight services. It's probably going to be a $40, $50 million deal now because of Lockheed and others taking costs out, becoming more efficient. Is it potentially possible in air traffic control we could actually get more remote control towers with better technology, to get better traffic separation for lower costs? I think the answer is possibly. We want to be part of that conversation. So as you'll see where AOPA takes this view, but it comes back to no user fees ever, never. We're done talking about it. And we think we get that done. As we said, the fly-ins have been a wild success for us this year. But we couldn't make any of it happen without the dedicated volunteers that give up their time to help out. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop caught up with a few of them. Whether it's carting crates, schlepping sandbags. How many do we need? Or any other task, Michael Clifford knows the drill. He's used to hard work. Going to um, MTSU uh, and I'm in their aerospace program to be a professional pilot. Uh, I'm a freshman and it's just, it's been a blast so far. I hope to do regional airlines. That's, uh, I have about 20 hours under my belt so far. I've soloed uh, in a 152, but that's about it so far. Well, in the air at least. On the ground, he's working hard as one of the hundreds of volunteers that made the Tullahoma Regional Fly-In possible. All these tables that you see behind me, uh, I had to set up, wipe them all down, um, put some stands down and the uh, umbrellas that they have in them. And his day started, thank goodness, way earlier than mine. It was about an hour and a half drive, so I got up at around 4 o'clock, so it was pretty tough for me. And you drug your friend with you, too. Yeah, I did. I picked him up in uh, Murfreesboro. We helped some exhibitors to set up and everything, and honestly, it was just amazing to see all those, all those kind of airplanes over there. None of this can happen without the help from Abdullah, Michael, and legions of others who gave up their day to do some really glamorous work. Look around, see the trash, um, if exhibitors need anything. But... We sincerely couldn't have done it without them. Perfect. In Tullahoma, Paul Hara, AOPA Live. Thanks, Paul, and thanks to all of our volunteers who helped us make it a great year. Well, one of our volunteers has gone above and beyond everyone else. Ed Lockster Camp has been to every single regional fly-in since we started them last year, and he has volunteered at most of them. Uh, Mark Baker's fault I do all of this stuff when he started doing these regional fly-ins. It's like, wow, now I have an excuse. I have a reason to go somewhere and hear what's going on. What is he doing with my money? So now I spend more money to go hear what he's doing with my little money. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Mark accepts the blame as well. He brought Ed up on stage to honor him for his dedication. And it's never too early to get your planning started for our 2016 fly-ins. They start in May in Beaufort, North Carolina. We'll also hit Battle Creek, Michigan, Bremerton, Washington, and Prescott, Arizona. Find out more and start saving the dates at aopa.org slash fly dash in. Okay, so we saw in the piece earlier, it takes a lot of people to pull these fly-ins off. We all pitch in and do what it takes, and we bring our different talents to help. Well, we finally have proof that AOPA Live's Paul Harrop is just full of hot air. He filled in as air show announcer for Greg Kuntz's aerobatic demonstration in Tullahoma. And a round of applause for Mr. Greg Kuntz as he rolls that airplane one more time before pulling up towards the end of the box. Well, way to go, Paul. Nice to see you branching out. You know, if this gig doesn't work out, you got other options.